future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. Good evening. This is Dr. Judy of Dr. Judy WTF, and this is a call-in show, folks, so please do call in. We're going to have a lot of interesting information tonight. Uh, we have a special guest. I'm going to introduce him in a couple minutes. Uh, I want to announce the call-in number so that you can take advantage of asking questions, and that number is 323-843-2826. And for those of you who don't know anything about me or the Mind Map or the Psychological Healing Center, I want to introduce to you my system of thinking, my system of healing, so that we can keep that in mind while we're talking about the very important topic that I'm going to introduce to you tonight. So uh, I am the founder of the Psychological Healing Center, and I have a beautiful staff of people, including life coach and psychologists, psychotherapists, and myself, of, of course. And we do mind map therapy. And mind map therapy is really a system of healing based on identifying childhood wounds, how they uh, embed in us how to decode them and morph out into health and healing. And so we're going to mind map uh, my very favorite creature on the planet, which is a dog. <laughs> and I just have a real soft spot for dogs. And tonight I have my dog trainer with me, very special gentleman. His name is Gil Escontrias. And he is a detective with the LAPD. He's been a detective for 35 years. He also is a former military dog trainer, and he has trained a lot of breeds. He has trained uh, dogs to be bomb sniffers and uh, sniff out narcotics. So very knowledgeable man. I've had firsthand experience with him. And uh, truly, he has a lot of skills and steeped in knowledge. So uh, thank you so much for being on air and welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, you are a plethora of knowledge. And um, we're going to be discussing some really important concepts tonight because people call me all the time. They want an, uh, an emotional support animal letter. And um, so we at the Psychological Healing Center do that. And I want to, of course, follow the law because I don't want Gil to put me in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure that the information is out there and everything is legal and ethical. And then there's another category called service animals, and uh, I want to make sure that people are following following the law so they don't commit a felony. And uh, so this is kind of like a way to prevent yourself from trouble and uh, also um, a lot of knowledge about how to train an animal, what methods are most effective. So we have a lot to talk about. So the first thing that I would like to ask you, Gil, is... What are the different classifications of assistance animals? Well, we've had dogs around for as, as long as I think the man has been around as well as a companion and such. Mm -hmm. They've done many things for us from hunting and such. And, and most importantly now that we've used them a lot more for service. Uh, we have different types. We have service dogs. We have uh, what's known as uh, emotional support animals. Yes. Okay. Uh, and as well as with therapy dogs and something, um, psychiatric assistance dogs as well, mm -hmm. and even therapy dogs. Okay. Okay. And then we have something new that's called more, um, but classified more as facilities dogs, which actually are working more with children and um, that are victims of abuse or anybody actually victim of abuse who want right. to, um, during an interview um, uh, of that person, uh, can um, 
um, talk to the dog or talk with the dog in the room and comfort them. And you actually even take them to court with you mm. in order to, to... what is that classification? They're generally referred to as facilities dogs. Facilities and dogs. And in fact, last January, the, a new law just came out, which actually allows the dog to be in the courtroom as well. And they're being utilized a lot in, in Los Angeles and such. And do these dogs need special training or could this dog be the child's pet? No, it's actually, they're actually <laughs> very extensive training. Uh, okay. the, the classifications generally, if you break down, a service dog generally receives a lot of specialized training. Mm -hmm. And they go from, for example, seeing eye dogs mm -hmm. to dogs that are able to retrieve things. Uh, in fact, yes. uh, I, I know a woman who has a dog that she can drop a dime onto the floor and the dog will pick it up and bring it back to her. Such So it actually performs a task, okay. whereas an um, emotional support animal does not generally perform a task. Mm -hmm. It's generally not required to be specially trained. And that's generally where we have sometimes get the gray area issues, especially dangerous and also uh, situations that, that sometimes are not very, very um, safe for others. Okay. Therapy dogs generally are a lot more specially trained because they have to go into um, hospitals. You don't want, you know, a little barky jumping on the bed, knocking out an IV. Yeah, of course. Okay. Right. So a lot more um, about uh, training as, as, as well as being desensitized. And most importantly, the handler also has to be more aware so that they don't infringe on other people's spaces or, or, or cause an issue with that. Okay. Facilities dogs are also very well trained as well mm -hmm. because they have to be in court. They have to ride in elevators, escalators and such. And then okay. most importantly, um, be very responsive to, to the victims that they're, that they're working with. Uh, again, sometimes um, uh, the kids are, can be very also fearful of animals as well. Okay. And so they want to do that. Um, we even have dogs that, as far as the therapy dogs, they'll go into libraries. And some of the studies I've read have shown that kids' comprehension in reading goes up about 50, 60 percent. You know, that is not surprising to me because as I um, interview patients and, of course, see patients who claim that they have ADD, which have certain thoughts about the diagnosis ADD, I'm sure that there is also a, a chemical factor involved. However, my way of seeing ADD is that when you're busy licking your emotional wounds, when you've been uh, emotionally wounded in childhood as the cause, as the blueprint, then it messes up your thinking. And when the amygdala is soothed by a dog, oh, my yes. goodness, all of a sudden the, yeah. the, the thinking starts clearing up. So it would be nice if um, li little buddy maybe was renamed um, you know, Prozac or, right. <laughs> <laughs> or, they, or something like that. And they most definitely have a calming effect. You know, we use yes. the dogs, for example, even with individuals who have PTSD, yes. the different levels. So when somebody does start having more anxiety and becoming more loud, the mm -hmm. dog then diverts the attention to themselves and they will jump on somebody. Again, the task that they perform. So if the task is, let's say, I, I see a lot of patients who have panic disorder. Right. And so... Could a performed task entail intervening in a panic attack? Yes. By, okay, so what what training would that entail? Ideally, the service dog itself, in, in my opinion anyway, is almost a custom-made animal. Yeah. A custom-made companion, if you will. Okay. Okay. Um, because of whether you have a dog that's going to detect uh, low blood sugar mm -hmm. uh, for seizures, seizure dogs and by such. By smell? Yes. That's okay. fantastic and, and, so, and, and so interesting. So you okay. have to almost have the dog not only to be able to recognize it, but also be able to alert properly and the individual to understand what the alert is. Mm -hmm. I currently have a client who does have the anxiety issues, and when she starts having uh, a, um, an onset of, of the anxiety, the dog will stop her and then divert her attention, and basically then she will sit, calm herself, and then and then move on. So that is a legitimate yes. task of yes. performance with the dog to the owner. Right. And I, I believe also an ideally a trainer can also do more, depending. Um, for example, I have had a client, uh, a, vet, a military veteran, mm -hmm. um, who suffers from Parkinson's okay. as well as PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, we understood that, that the Parkinson's and the palsy was going to get worse. Mm -hmm. So we were able, actually not only for the training, allowing him to go out into public, for the PTSD in different mm -hmm. different areas that we go to. Mm -hmm. But also the understanding is that either one, he's, he's going to have balance issues. Yes. So we have a dog large enough that's going to be able to, so he can balance himself. Okay. And also if he were to fall down, he would mm -hmm. call the dog over, tell the dog to brace himself, and the dog would brace himself, and then he was able to get up. Beautiful. He's a very large man too. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so, and then selecting the breed of dog is, is important with that. Yeah, of course. You don't want a chihuahua. No, the chihuahua that. doesn't work too well on that. No. <laughs> okay. But we also knew that down the line, and because of the working uh, age of the dog, and sometimes the dogs can only be six, seven, eight years, mm -hmm. that now we have to, once we start getting the dog going, then we would have to maybe possibly start on a puppy. And what age sure. do you start training these service animals? Well, I think all dogs mm -hmm. should be trained, starting to train at eight and nine weeks. Okay. That's immediately. when they're most malleable. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm in, and in fact, I, I met a veterinarian, Dr. Ian Dunbar, um, I believe he was out of Berkeley in 1982. Mm -hmm. And he really, his philosophy and, and approach to understanding why dogs do what they do changed me from a handler to a trainer in okay. understanding that. I don't always agree with everything what he said, but... Mm -hmm. The natural instinct of a dog at that age is usually just to, to, to poop, sleep, and eat. Okay. So we work on a lure method, and we wean the dogs off of food almost within 20 minutes. And then the dog... As a reinforcement. Yes. Okay. And so it's imprinted into the dog mm -hmm. as opposed to the dog at, at a later age. Because, as, as again, as the dog matures, then its, it's um, motivations are very different. So what is imprinted in the dog if food is not a reinforcement? No, it's because you wean them off fairly quickly. So what you can end up doing then is, is putting the dog mechanically into a sit position following the food. Once you do it two or three times, you withhold the food and the dog follows the scent on your hands. Mm -hmm. And then you withdo that and you go from fixture interval one for one mm -hmm. to two for one, three for one, four for okay. one. And within, Gradually withdrawing that Right, and usually okay. I, sometimes within two days the dog will sit and it's you know, imprinted i'm really upset that i didn't have you yeah. <laughs> as a trainer from yeah. when my dog was eight nine weeks old but we'll make up for yes it. yes ideally people think that the dog has to be six months and the only reason that that kind of came about is only because of the rabies shots mm -hmm. of taking your dog out in public i and, see and so okay. but i don't i'm not a big advocate of I, i'm a big advocate of socialization mm -hmm. but not the idea is that that there's puppy training there's basic training, there's intermediate, and there's advanced. Okay. I believe it's all, everything you do with your dog, 24 hours a day is training. Mm -hmm. The dog is training for the big show. Okay. What that big show is, we'll never know until it occurs. It's very much like in police You mean work. the panic attack or the low blood sugar level? Or, or stopping you from walking in the or street. Or the heart attack. Yes. Or, speaking of heart attacks, what can a dog do if a person is having a heart attack? Well, with, depending on, 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 say, for some dogs, especially even therapy, or any dog for that matter, mm -hmm. you can train a dog to go call for help, just like the old lassies. You know what? Yeah. You know, Jimmy fell in the well mm -hmm. in doing that. And in fact, mm -hmm. we've, uh, we've had trainers that they'll do with some dogs what they'll have like a, a panic button okay. or a button, a large button, like like the, uh, the staples button. And then you okay. tell the dog, go get help, and the dog will go press the button. And then actually the type of phone that, that – that it's connected to, then we'll either speakerphone or we'll dial 9114. So it's a coordination job. So the dog then has to, the, the, the button has to be at sort of, I was going to say fingertip access, but paw, paw tip access. Pretty much. Right? Either it could be on the floor, it could mm -hmm. be on a table. I mean, okay. uh, um, the dogs can, can work these out. And a lot of it has mm -hmm. to do with repetition and training. Okay. And uh, is a dog motivated to do it? And are most dogs trainable? All dogs are trainable. All dogs are tra fan fabulous. Because the level people is people think maybe maybe not that some dogs are just made for for this task well, and others not so much. It, it also depends. I mean, some people will always ask me which is the smartest dog, and I'll say, well, what tasks do you want to perform? I see. Okay. You know, some some are more apt and able than others. Some dogs, uh, depending, like for example, when we go for dogs for. Narcotics. In fact, one of the newer dogs that that my unit was looking to get, one that sniffs out um, cell phones and uh, USB drives and things okay. like that, working working in um, 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 child pornography. Mm -hmm. um, but it, in fact, even in the military, we had a small dog program for the Navy, mm -hmm. in which small dogs like beagles, pomeranians, Cairn terriers, were used because they were to really sniff small out? to sniff out bombs oh, and, and narcotics. Okay. Easily taken on a submarine, not mm -hmm. really big. It's kind of rough when you're taking up a, you know, a 200-pound German Shepherd in a submarine. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't telegraph that you're doing anything to uh, undercover expose anything. No. If there's a poodle there or a little Pomeranian, you're not thinking that particular person is sniffing anybody out. Well, most of the time, as a handler, they know what the purpose of the dog is. It's, it's mm -hmm. no different than when you go to the airport now and you have a dog walk by. It's either going to be drugs or it's going to be vegetables. 
Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so we can use them for a lot of different things. So, for example, um, audiences listening in, tuning in, thinking, I need an emotional support animal. Okay. What kind of dog? would be best suited or what kind of even pet would be best suited uh, each of them again um, under the uh, if actually if you're talking about a service dog actually a service animal no like an emotional support animal okay. for calming them down and each, uh, each one is yeah. different but i think the the issue comes in where you have to kind of evaluate if you will mm -hmm. is that when you t if you're going to take that animal with you will it cause more anxiety to you Okay. So there are some people who totally insist. In, in fact, there was a woman who's had a, a, a monkey. Mm -hmm. And she insisted this was her, her animal, and that's what it's going to be, and this is what I'd like, and mm -hmm. this is what I want. Okay. And in essence, everywhere she went, she ended up causing more havoc. Okay. And there was a lawsuit because she indicated that, that and then actually did not go in her favor because of the type of animal. Okay. okay. Now, emotional support animals do not enjoy the same type of rights as a full-service animal does. And in fact, about the only place it can really, um, where you can actually take advantage of that is on a common carrier, mm -hmm. such as an airplane, a mm -hmm. boat, or even, I've, I've yet to see an Uber case come up. Okay. Um, or even in housing. If so they're allowed on a boat? An ESA? Com common carriers, yes. Common carrier, meaning a boat, a boat, an bus, airplane, airplane, such like so that. So the ESA animal is allowed right. on that vehicle. Now, I remember when we were speaking about this, and I asked you, well, okay, can I take my dog here and there? And you said, well, it depends what service right. he, the, she performs. The task. The task. Yes. Okay. Now, for example, if you were to go into a, a, a supermarket, Mm -hmm. It needs to be a service dog. Not That's not a common carrier. No. Gotcha. Not, not an ESA dog. Okay. Not even a therapy dog. Okay. So now let's go back to the law because I want to stay within the law, especially okay. now that you know where I live. I don't <laughs> want to be arrested. <laughs> okay. So so let's say that I have a, a, a patient that's calling me and saying, you know, Dr. Judy, I suffer from anxiety and I'd like to have a an ESA letter and I say okay um, come on in let's do an interview and I assess them for um, anxiety and I go through my list of symptoms of anxiety and I see that indeed they suffer from anxiety so a how many times do I need to see them to be within the law and and, and at what level anxiety can I now write this letter and when shouldn't I be writing this letter and by the way this pertains to other psychologists and MFTs and so on right. so I hope you're listening in because and, and we do want to and chiropractors right. oh I didn't know they were allowed to issue this as, as well so um, let's let's learn so that we don't get into any legal issues. Okay, well, the law is pretty vague. It doesn't give any num total number. It's just okay. in your professional opinion, do you believe that this is what is going to, to address that issue? Okay, now let's say little Fido bites someone. Uh, okay, so am I, as a psychologist or any licensed practitioner responsible, do I have to tell that patient to bring the dog in, which I don't no. mind. I don't have to examine the dog. No. I could take that because I'll ask them, is your dog uh, pretty tame and mild? Does your dog bite and so on and so forth? Do I have to ask these no. questions? My understanding is that there's no requirement because at, at the same time, it mm -hmm. may not even be a dog. It could be a horse. Okay. That's great. It could also Common be carrier. Okay, Good. I mean, on the bus. Right. Sure. Somebody brought in a peacock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or mm -hmm. a ferret. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for you to actually look at that, uh, you know, at the animal to make determination, you can't do. That. I mean, you probably wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. Ideally, what you're saying, it's almost like writing a prescription, and this is what we're, this is what our recommendation is. Most people are asking for this letter because they want to have their pet reduce their anxiety in their living situation and, and that's the fine the landlord will say okay here's a great example i'm sorry mrs jones you cannot live here because no pets allowed and then mrs jones says aha but i have an esa letter right and this esa letter says that i'm highly anxious and i need little fido to calm me down now what okay that's again the cause in front of a fair housing and they generally cannot discriminate against you and you can have the dog. Okay. 
Okay. However, they cannot charge you any more, like a deposit or anything else, but you're still responsible for the conduct of the dog. Mm-hmm. I have found in my, in my experience that most or a good portion of the ESA dogs are not well trained mm-hmm. because, again, uh, they don't have the requirements as the other two or they're not out in public as much. Are they supposed to be trained? No. There's no requirement that they have a special task with training. Okay. But the liability is a lot greater when you start taking your dog places and such. And, and that's the other thing about that is many people do not have any type of insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that if your dog does bite someone for whatever reason. So it's not a free ride. No. In other words, just because you have a letter, it doesn't protect you from liability because if your dog bites or if your dog, let's say, poops on the carpet of an airplane and causes... A biohazard. A, a bi- thank you, a biohazard, <laughs> then you might be required to... Um, pay for the the, right. the plane to land, yes. right? <laughs> generally speaking, yeah. generally speaking, those, not cheap. No, not cheap. I, I, and, uh, and pretty <laughs> embarrassing as well. That's true. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, for example, a, a person with a service dog generally will make a lot of more provisions mm-hmm. for the dog. Okay, so like, let's skip to service dog because this is a whole other. Training and requirement, right. it's well, a higher level. Right, but I'm saying, though, is that the person handling the dog would make requirements. Same with the, the therapy dog. People would go to the bathroom first, not mm-hmm. feed them until after they arrive or anything else like that. So it actually precludes any type of accident occurring. So there's a little bit more thought. So most of the people with ESAs figure they're just going to have the dog in their arms. And, you know, it, it comes across sometimes as doggy jewelry. That they only want the dog for that specific purpose to, mm-hmm. and it may be, it may calm them, okay. but again sometimes when they're confronted, it actually causes a lot more anxiety. Now, as we've all seen um, and heard from news reports, some dogs are put in overhead compartments yeah. and they die. Some dogs are put in the the cargo section and the temperature drops, or right. they they just pass because of whatever conditions are going on there. Now, if this letter is presented, can the person be assured that that dog can travel with them, not in the overhead compartment, not in the freight carrier, but how? Again, that's one of the things that has to be discussed, again, prior to even even boarding a flight and such like that. Find Mm -hmm. out what the rules and the regulations for that particular airline. Okay. Okay. And That's number one. Yes. So listen to that Making piece sure of advice. Call you have, your airline. You, that you mm-hmm. have the letter, that the letter is valid. Morris, I believe some in some um, airlines require it within one year issue. One year. That's okay. my understanding, yes. So, and, and then and most importantly is the size of the dog. I mean, if you're, you're, if you're going to take a St. Bernard. And yeah, then, that was my next right, question. And Do expect you have, that you're going to have a, mm-hmm, a seat for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you could, again, more anxiety. Yes. Um, so... The, again, preparation is important about mm-hmm. the feeding of the dog, the grooming of the dog. Okay. Okay, because some dogs, you know, and people think, well, it's just my dog, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And that can cause more problems, especially for children or anyone else who has a, maybe a, a, um, an allergy. That, that's an interesting um, right. thought, too, because if the passengers on the airline say, I can't have this dog in my presence... Who, who wins out? Wait, well, who in the, wins uh, out? On the ESA dog, it would then be between the airline and the individual. Where it's mm-hmm. if it's a service dog, the dog, the dog, the, the, dog, the, dog, the dog, dog wins on that. Okay, okay. But again, the, the biggest issue that has to be, be actually conveyed mm-hmm. is that if the dog is anywhere else than at your side, then the dog cannot perform the, the, the not only the task, but what it was intended to be, to okay. calm you. Okay. Okay. So if it's, if it's in the overhead bin, which it should not be, okay. You can't see the dog. The can't be dog cannot be with you to either calm you because most of the time, the people who do have the ESA dogs, there's the petting, the, the anxiety. Uh, they need them they uh, need, at hand. That's that's what the dog is there for. Um, and, and just because you have so much experience with animals, how what would you say the maximum flight hour would be that a dog can comfortably tolerate without going to the bathroom and so on and so forth because you're not going to do a 24-hour flight oh, no. with your service animal no correct so correct. what would you recommend e- e- again each dog is different a lot of it has to okay. do with with the training because some there are some people who leave their dog at home inside the house mm-hmm. for eight six seven hours and then they come home and let the dog out and the dog has been conditioned that way mm-hmm. some dogs can only go two or three hours without having to be relieved. And again, those are the provisions you have to make. So, for example, uh, my therapy dog, 
a scout, before we even get, when we leave the house, I tell her, get busy, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And she does it on command. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even now, it, when I take her to work, I, she kind of gives me a clue that he has to go to the bathroom. I can confine her to a smaller area. Mm -hmm. And so I can then give her a command and she will go on command. Mm -hmm. So then I make provisions for that. If I have to take extra, um, um, the little uh, piddle pads type of deal. Okay. I can take her to the bathroom, tell her to, to go. Mm -hmm. And again, each dog is different for that. And those okay. are the things that you have to prepare for. Okay. Four or five hours sometimes is probably not a good thing. But again, remembering is that the dog's still going to need water, still has to be hydrated. Yes. Um, and then for those issues that you have to deal with. So what would be a maximum uh, again, each dog light would be, hour? Shouldn't be more than, than, I would say, three hours. Okay. Okay. okay, before there is something having to be done. Some again, relief inside for the right. dog. Right, okay. and then the same thing, dog, some dogs, again, if you've got a, a large dog, these, you're trying to stuff under the seat, okay? <laughs> He's got to get out okay. and stretch, okay? Yeah, sure. And again, you, there, there's so many, and again, each dog is different in, 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 as to how they're trained and how they work and how well. Uh, but again, that's the issue that, that, that occurs with some people that they don't think of these things and assume that everyone else has to mold to them. And that's where you have a problem when, when okay. there's misunderstandings with the flight crew. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, the issue that comes up with the flight crew is that they are the ultimate authority up there. And they will put and that. they are. And they will put the flight okay. down. And now suddenly you're having an FBI agent coming on, taking you off because, it's, uh, because of a federal offense, because of an argument, you know, as opposed to, you know, uh, uh, concerning the dog itself. Okay. And, 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 and sometimes it can be very embarrassing. It could quite possibly be very costly. And again, the biggest thing again is, 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 if you have an anxiety issue already, why become more ang anxious? That's why we have people who, for example, will have a vest for their dog, which generally identifies the dog, mm -hmm. which actually reduces anxiety because now someone knows what the dog is there for, mm -hmm. and there's not an issue. But mm -hmm. we've had people that will walk in some place, carry the dog, and and kind of almost bait people into, into asking them about the dog. So they either create a lawsuit, or create. A, uh, a scene and then somehow um, uh, it actually caused more anxiety for everybody else and that's that's not um, right you mean the 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 the, the people who want to pet the dog for example uh, and most or? of the people that are bringing the dogs in sometimes mm -hmm. it's almost like they're, okay. they, they, they're and i've seen more than a few times in which someone would uh, actually try to bait a store owner is to tell me i have to take leap with my dog or things like that and then get into an argument over that Oh, okay. Because and they don't because it, even they don't understand the ESA rules of how it does not apply in certain certain situations. And now they believe, or for example, the, and you talked about the law. If you purport your dog to be a service dog, yes, okay, that is a misdemeanor. Okay, if the dog is not if the dog is not a task a task yes. So and see that's why some people will mistake. Well, the dog performs a service, and the service is uh, emotional support. That's not a task. That's not a task. What about, okay, so just to clarify, what about panic disorder? If, if the task is to calm the person down because right. they're agoraphobic or claustrophobic or so on, so is that a task? It, could, it depends on what the dog actually does. I if, see. If the dog okay. paws at you, mm -hmm. whines, barks, does mm -hmm. things like that. But if it just sits in your lap and licks your face, no. that's not, not necessarily a task. And this is a call-in show, and... Uh, Gil has so much information, and please feel free to call in at 323-843-2826 and, uh, and, and ask away because you really have so much experience with this. And I'm, I'm not done <laughs> with uh, using your services for my little 11-month-old Sarah, who is a beautiful German shepherd who has great respect for Gil. I would say not so much for me. I'm a bit of a softy, and, uh, and Gil knows, is actually <laughs> trying to toughen me up, so we'll work on that some more. Um, so let, let's get into um, the relationship between, oh, I know, I wanted to ask you about fake control versus real control. So as pet owners, there's fake control, and then there's real control, which goes also into respect and boundaries. So yes. let's talk more about that. Uh, again, sometimes what happens is is that people will, uh, for example, treat train their dogs, okay? And that's and, and again, there's so many different types of, of training methods and ideas okay. and, and, and philosophies, just like, again, like raising children, mm -hmm. okay? The idea is you have almost looking as, why is a dog working for you? Is it because of respect? 
uh, and sometimes people say there's a little bit of fear in there, mm -hmm. uh, however the measure is. Mm -hmm. um, but also, again, what motivates the dog. Uh, yes. For dogs, for example, that, that are detection dogs, mm -hmm. um, generally will work off of uh, what we call a, a toy or, or we call ball crazy. They love the ball. They'll work mm, for the ball okay. and such. Um, some dogs just want a couple of good pets and that's it. And other dogs you have to really um, um, show a lot of affection for. Mm -hmm. So, again, the, the idea is how you approach it. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, how well the dog is trained and whether the dog has to have its self-confidence in that thinking when they're walking down the street, do they have to protect you? They have to protect everybody else. Who's that dog coming up? Yes. And so they end up becoming a little bit more aggressive or actually showing signs of aggression, although they may not be an aggressive dog. Mm -hmm. Only a very small percentage of dogs are actually what we call predatory aggressors. Most other dogs will... They play, that in fact, that they are aggressive. That's mm -hmm. why their hackles will go up. The dog will make himself look bigger. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they're basically saying, stay away from me. I don't trust you. But not, necess will, not, necessarily. Will not necessarily bite you. Not necessarily, no. Yeah. Okay. The other extreme are the fear biters, mm -hmm. dogs that will snap at you. And most of the time, dogs will give you a warning long before they will actually do a bite. They'll either growl, they'll look mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. You can see the whites of their eyes. Mm -hmm. um, they'll... Um, uh, maybe snap at you when you think, oh, I was really quick. I got my mm -hmm. hand out of the way. Mm -hmm. He's just basically warning you, telling okay. you, leave me alone. Okay. And, and most people don't don't uh, heed those warnings sometimes. So you're talking about re reward systems. So some dogs will feel rewarded by playing ball. Yes. Some dogs will be rewarded by being pets. Some yes. dogs will feel motivated by food. Yes. Okay, so... Out there are a bunch of training methods. I've heard of the clicker method, yes. which I've never tried. Then there's the the, the, the prong method, pinch collar, and then yes. the p pinch collar, and then there's the choke chain, right. and then there's the electric or e-collar, e -collar, right. and then there's the food reinforcement, right. and I'm sure there are other ways. The hall tea, things like that, yes. Right, and I forget um, if the what, the dog whisperer, Caesar yes. Milan, I don't even... He, he makes noises or something. He makes like noises. Yeah. Okay, so so people out there, just like I am, uh, you know, I, I'm confused. So what do I do? Well, do I use food, clicker, this, that, that, this? Okay, so what do we do? <laughs> my philosophy in, in my approach is I do real training for real dogs for real life. Okay. I like it. Okay. Okay. It's the, authentic. The, hopefully, because okay. <laughs> in my job in the military, that if I didn't uh, do the right way or my dog was not trained properly, I was going to get killed, and so were the people that were working with me. Yeah, so this okay. is really... Oh, we have a call-in. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. So let's let's take the call-in. Hi, you are on the couch with Dr. Judy and Detective Gil Escontrias. Hi, <laughs> Dr. Judy. <laughs> I, I'm going to use a different name. I'm a patient of yours, uh, Jen. We're going to call me Jen. Hi, okay? Jen. How are you doing? How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about my favorite creature here and uh, with I an know. expert. You know, there's, there's something wrong with my Internet. It's on a delay. It keeps, um, what's it called when it, it, it messes up? Anyway, I think okay. I'm behind on your show. But anyway, um, my question was... Um, you did prescribe a, a prescription um, for a service dog with me. Thank you so much. You're but welcome. it was for for severe depression. Remember, you said there was one diagnosis for very severe, like the worst depression, and that that could have a prescription for a service dog. So I just wanted to, because that wasn't actually um, discussed with you guys, unless I missed it. Why I don't to, Why don't you ask Gil? Because again, there's a distinction between an emotional support animal, which is the only certification I can give because I'm not a service dog certifier. So I cannot say oh. that your dog is a service dog. See, that's so where... who do I get the prescription from then? You, you don't get a prescription. You get... Go, go ahead. Okay. You're uh, going to answer that uh, one. Ideally for that, I, again, um, each... For example, for depression and such, many of the dogs are trained that when um, you don't feel like getting up out of bed, this, these are the dogs that will get you motivated and, 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 and try to address that issue with you because also they have needs as well. Um, and actually that's generally referred to as a psychiatric assistance dog mm -hmm. for that. Okay, mm -hmm. um, There are people that claim to have certify a dog, but there is not any one type of, of um, um, governing body, if you will, that says that this dog in fact does that. Okay, we've got the only exception that are the guide, guide dogs for the blind, and, and those trainers have to be certified by the state of California. Okay, mm -hmm. but any other dogs, again, like I said, that the service dogs are generally custom, custom built, if you will, 
uh, to be able to um, um, respond to your situation, and then the alert that you have to be able to look at uh, and to be able to identify the and then task, the task mm-hmm. to do that. Okay, right. Well, so, what about this diagnosis of severe, the most severe depression? Being able to have a service dog for for depression. Okay, so what's the task? The, the task, Jenny, would be is to to one if you're not getting out of bed, if you're not motivated, you're not moving up. Generally, the dogs, depending on how you want to approach that, we either jump on the bed, move you around, demand to go out, whine, bark. And, and again, okay, I just want okay. to clarify because this is a great question, and you know, I wonder about this also. So remember, I'm not a certified um, service dog trainer. Right. So no, right. the but person, you can you can prescribe a service dog to someone, right? Well, not necessarily. You no, don't need to. No, don't need prescri- a prescription. You don't need a prescription. Oh. you just put it this way: it, when, say, for example, you take your dog and you go somewhere, okay, and yeah. you, and you are stopped. Someone says, "Hey, is this?" And there's only two questions that generally can ask you: one, is this a service? Or is this a service dog due to a disability? Okay, and when I teach people, I say you have to say the whole, all the words. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. does it perform a task? Mm-hmm. And then your response would generally be yes and yes. And that's all basically you have to do. But if you, for example... They're not, they're not allowed to ask what the disability is? No. Or no. what the task is? No. That, that's an, they it's can an, ask about no, the they, task? They can. No, it does it perform a task. Does it and they do not have to, you don't have to prove, in fact, that the dog does a task. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, here's the other side to that. There are people who truly have a service dog, okay, but they're treating it like a pet. That could also ha- cause yeah. them to, to question you more, mm-hmm. maybe even write you a citation for it, and then you'll have to go to court and have to, you know, to kind of uh, uh, sort that out. Because most of the time that when you have that particular dog, that it's, it has to be available to you and, and, and not sitting at the table with you at, 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 at Starbucks uh, and such. And, it, and so... Um, when you put yourself in a situation to where they're going to question you more. And in fact, there is case law on that where an individual went into Costco Mm -hmm. with a vest, vest. fully Mm -hmm. trained, everything, Mm -hmm. and in Costco asked them the question. They said, well, you don't have to because it is obvious that this dog is is a a service dog. And and the courts have held that they can ask because a lot of it was the conduct this individual was doing with that particular dog. They can ask... If it's a service dog, you're saying? Yes, even if it's obvious. Generally speaking, they'll say if it's... Right, a, but, they're, but they're not allowed to say what's your disability? No, I cannot ask you what your disability is. Personal. And they're, and they're not allowed to ask, what does the dog do for you? No, not allowed okay. to ask you that. They're, they're insisting that they're allowed to ask that. No. Because they, they insist. They just like insist that they or that it's within their right. Well, to well, you're no. you're fortunate to be talking to a detective with LAPD. So I would say okay. go go with <laughs> which is, which is my, what Detective yeah. Gill is saying. Yeah. That is yeah, the law. Yeah, no, yeah. I, that's my I'll side job. And, and, and the but title detective, detective Gill. So I don't need a prescription. No. for a service dog. No. Okay, so but, I can just get a service dog, and, and I don't even need a prescription. No, Mm-mm. you don't. Mm-mm. Do I need a letter from a doctor? Anything? No, you do not. Mm-mm. The no. only Holy place sugar. where the only place where I come in is if you say, Doctor Judy, um, I would like to be able to travel with this dog. Remember well, the service the, dog, yeah. uh, okay. the, the the ESA dog. The yeah. ESA dog. I like. I'd like to be able to rent a house or an apartment that will not turn the dog down. And then I could say, okay. You've been in treatment with me, or I have uh, examined you psychologically, and I see that these and these and these symptoms apply. And yes, indeed, you would really benefit by an emotional support animal. So remember, the psychiatrist, psychologist, I guess chiropractor, Chiropractor, it it can issue emotional support animal letters, but not service dog letters. Correct. Right. Yes. Well, but but the I would do this as well. Okay. Again, especially if someone's going to question you, and again, most of it is, is basically on your conduct. Mm-hmm. If you are going to get a service dog for the depression, a letter from from a, a psychiatric professional would definitely help. If you yeah. are stopped and such, and although you don't have to show it, okay. Um, but if again, if you actually we want to look at what's best evidence. The best evidence is I have this, I have this, I have this, yes. and everything else, all that together. So that if you are questioned, say for example, they call the police and, and you just okay, you know what? Let me just lay it out there for you, and you have it. But I mean, nothing says that you are required to do it. Okay. But a lot of times, it's actually easier, better, more best evidence, if you will, 
if you have all that together and then that way it, it, it's actually less stress and then and, and actually i think the people that are going to talk to you say for example if they do call the police would probably say okay okay it's a little bit easier and mm -hmm. I have a client right now, and she, she challenges people all the time, which causes more anxiety. Yeah. But she has all her stuff ready, so if somebody were to challenge her, she can just say, you know what, let me just go through that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would most definitely, although that's not required, mm -hmm. okay, I would definitely get a letter just to kind of shore it up. Okay. Okay, okay yeah. so can Dr. Judy write I was, that yes, kind of sure, letter? Yes, sure, yes. Okay, so what would it sound like, just, just, just so that just I know? Basically just like the ESA letter. Just to say I recommend uh, This is this recommendation. Uh, uh, she has this condition. A service dog letter. Do I have to say the di I can't say you the diagnosis. Could I say, do I have to say the symptoms? Nope. No, just I, I could just recommendation say. Recommendation of this. Due to her a disability. Her disability. I recommend a service dog letter right. for my patient. And here's my information if you care to talk to me. So again, I see. Okay, right. I see. So, so that's where I can be helpful yes. with within the the realm of service dog. I mean, again, it goes kind of back to to mm -hmm. the, the stronger the evidence, the less gotcha. of a problem that you have. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, because there again, there are people who just say, "Well, it just makes me feel good." Yeah. And I tell people, "Well, if that's the case, mm -hmm. then I'd, I'd have a doctor write me a note for a you know a, a thirty year old blonde, yeah. you know, to make <laughs> you right. feel good and, and, course, and do the course. same <laughs> the same thing." Okay, now or an I emotional support animal, not service. Yes. Okay. If it so, just makes them feel good. so here, here's what I'm thinking, and correct me if I'm off. Is that Jen? If you decide to get a service dog, then let it be a trained service dog because it's a felony no, misdemeanor. To, mi, sorry. Go ahead okay. with that. Okay. It is a misdemeanor, it's a misdemeanor to to verbally, not only verbally or mm -hmm. even imply that your dog by actually by having the vest. Or, or even in writing, mm -hmm. or if you go get a license from the state of California, like okay. at your local uh, uh, city where you have a dog license, there is a special license you can get. So those are the things I, ideally that you should, I believe you should, that kind of minimizes the confrontation. Yeah. You can get a license for, yes. for your service dog. Yes. It's actually issued from the Department of Agriculture through your city, and the city actually will say, I, I certify under penalty of perjury that this dog is a service dog that performs a task. Okay, mm -hmm. and it and it looks like the state of California, so it's the red or blue mm -hmm. tag, mm -hmm. and those are the small things that are actually the, they may appear to be small, but are the big things really that really minimizes confrontation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so if you if you do that, same with the vest. And I want to I want to bring this up because um, Gil is I think a hundred days out. Hundred days from retirement <laughs> from yes. LAPD, and he is going to be uh, training. Um, oh. service dogs. More full-time wow. now, yes. Yeah, he's beautiful, and he has a project called Throw Me a Bone, and oh. it's about sponsoring dogs who are needed by people, in, 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 in some cases women, um, who are in shelters because they have been victims of human trafficking. And okay. so he will be training these dogs, hopefully with sponsorships, so that they could be fed and uh, get up to date on shots and so on and so forth. And so once these dogs are trained, they can be service dogs to uh, an emotional, emotional, support, emotional, support, emotional support, therapy. support therapy dogs to people who have had uh, PTSD, complex PTSD, right. and so on and so forth. And just for those of you who are interested in contacting Detective Gill, he can be reached at Blue Line Dogs LA. That's Blue Dog. Blue Line Dogs LA at gmail.com. And so if you are interested in getting a service dog, a well trained service dog, I would say he's the man. Well, I, again, oh. with the service dog, each one is in, <laughs> they're individual, depending. And, and again, sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a bit to find the right dog for the right person. It, it, it's like a marriage sometimes. And you can help with that. We can, yeah, we okay. can. Okay, you can do like the matchmaking. Yes, we try okay. to. Okay, yes. all right. Well, thank you so much. I think, does that clarify a lot more for you, Jen? Yeah, I, I, still, have, I still have a little bit of questions. So in other words, Dr. Judy cannot write a prescription for a service dog. Is that correct, no, Dr. It, uh, it, Detective? It, well, she can recommend She can make one. a recommendation. Yeah, I can't write a prescription. Okay. Right. But I can say my patient so-and-so and such-and-such -and -such suffers from a diagnosable mental disorder. I recommend a service dog to her. Well, you don't have to say mental disorder. You can no. say... Disability. You disability. Can say you can give it the, the medical code even. 
right? I, I would I would just refer to as a disability. I would just say disability. You know, keep it generic. Yeah. Right. Disability. Okay. Emotional disability. Yeah. Since I'm a psychologist, right. I mean, I can't say physical yeah. disability because I'm not an MD. And I'd be happy to do that for you, by the way. Uh, again, basically, what it does it, it yeah. shores up that in fact there's a need for it. It's, if if there's a question or if there's a problem, mm -hmm. uh, again, the more documentation you have for some of the, the, the these issues, it mm -hmm. actually. Uh, if you were to get into trouble or a problem. But again, the th remember, the service dogs are a lot better trained. They're more yes. socialized to go places. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is handler attitude, where you don't just hand your dog off to somebody and go off you know, off, off on other rides at the fair. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. um, The dog's at your side. And, and a lot of times you can tell between a, a real service dog or, or even a therapy dog and one that there's somebody just you know, put some clothes on through on, on a basket right. at a Target. Right. Okay. Um, Sarah couldn't get away with no. it. She'd be like, ah, <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> and, and it's also an attitude because there's also boundaries that you have to be very aware of mm -hmm. in going to, to restaurants and stuff. For example, if you go into a restaurant, um, you can be kicked out if you have a service dog, if your dog is unruly. Mm -hmm. Okay, or if it if it urinates or defecates in there, yeah. um, ideally what the dog should be doing is go under the under the uh, the table, lie down, go to sleep, mm -hmm. and wait until you're ready to go. And I think that is a key indicator of a real yes. trained service dog is that dog is at command of the owner yes. and not just out on an outing with right. the owner. Command and control. Yeah. Command and, and control. And the, the, the bottom line, detective, is we we actually don't need a prescription for a service no. dog. Anybody can get a service dog yes. provided the service dog performs a certain task for right. them. That and you have a true disability. Need. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. For their disability. And okay. you just have and to be careful of the dis misdemeanor thing. Yes. Because if they discover that you don't have that true disability, then you're. Uh, outside the confines of the law. Right. And also, yeah. there are mm -hmm. some, some tax advantages to that as well. Oh, and I want to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, there are some issues concerning uh, disability uh, in the state of California mm -hmm. in that, that uh, if you do have a disability and you can apply and that there is some uh, financial assistance for, for the feeding of the dog as well. Oh, wow. It's always like no, one this of those. This is wonderful. This you is are you, so... Um, important in, in terms of information because people don't know this and uh, I just think there's so much confusion around ESA right. and service and I had no idea that there were tax advantages and write-offs and so on so this has been really really informative and Jen feel free to contact me to um, have that recommendation in place okay <laughs> thank you okay thank you dr judy thank you detective gill okay thank you, you thanks for calling in okay yeah, it did i guess it was just, just gill because i'm not here as a detective but that's good. okay gill okay. all right but you are okay. okay um so also um let's see there's a couple of other questions about um the vest. Do you need a, Do you need the vest uh, well, for the service I, dog? What What occurs now that there's on the internet, you can for forty five dollars or one hundred ten dollars or whatever, mm -hmm. you can buy a vest and a so called certified service dog or certified ESA dog okay. identification card that that you some kind of database. Okay, most people will look at that and say, "Well, I'm not going to go check a database just because you happen to put it in there." Okay. All right, so I'm going to ask that delicate question. You know, I have Sarah, my right. beautiful dog, mm -hmm. and after much training, and they did a somewhat okay job, but as you pointed out, they didn't train me. Right. Okay. That's the biggest but she's thing. very trained. Yeah, very I well had trained. I had her examined mm -hmm. by Gil, and he said, "Oh, this is a great dog. She's a keeper. She knows everything, but you don't." Right. <laughs> okay. So what if I put that beautiful vest on and that little card, and I took her out? Am I out? Outside the confines of the law. Okay, and if you put on as an ESA dog. No, not ESA. Oh, as, as a service, service dog. Yes. And you, as you know, Sarah, she's 11 months old. Right. She doesn't respect me yet. Right. Okay. So, am I outside the confines of a law, right. law to do that? Because you're implying with the vest that the dog is a service dog. Gotcha. Okay. okay Again, so I'm asking this because I want right. everyone out there to learn and to understand the law, so that you don't get. Uh, a misdemeanor, what right. would be a felony, for example? They, they would not rise to a level of felony. They would not. No, it, okay. it, it, it doesn't do that. In fact, I think that we're fortunate enough that's even just a misdemeanor. Okay. Uh, again, there are a lot of people that, that, that um, uh, the advocates for, for the disabled mm -hmm. who really have uh, been really, you know, been um, um, 
trying to push for more legislation to be able to, to manage this better. Okay. It's almost very similar to, to um, having a handicap sticker where people are abusing that. Yes. So don't just get a vest and a little card and walk your dog into a restaurant or right. wherever and well, assume that it's okay. Right, it's not it, okay. Not okay. An ESA yeah. dog does not follow the under the American Disabilities Act okay. in going into a, a restaurant. Okay. It only basically affects in common carriers mm -hmm. as well as in housing. Mm -hmm. So if you try to go in, into a restaurant and you try to say it's a service dog and it, in fact, isn't, mm -hmm. and again, once you, you can't unring that bell, okay. uh, and especially in some, some restaurants, although they claim to be dog-friendly. Mm -hmm. now, And that's also the other issue that goes on. In some cities, I know the city that I live in, mm -hmm. um, you can't take a dog even if they claim to be dog-friendly mm. because the city municipality says that the law says that no dogs are allowed in, in business establishments. Okay, so that rules. That could also go. Okay. The other side as well is that if you own a business and mm -hmm. you want to so-called be dog friendly, mm -hmm. there's an issue as well as that if that even if it's a regular dog or anybody else, and like if you own a coffee shop and people want to bring their dog and lay down, if that dog were to bite someone, mm -hmm. okay, you've already violated the law by allowing the dog in, and there's also could be a deep pockets issue where someone's going to sue you for allowing the dog in there. Okay, and, and something I learned from you is because I love to take my dogs off leash because right. it's not fun for me to have them on leash if I'm hiking. You recommended, well, I have a beautiful lab and he's the perfect dog. He's now 11 years old and harmless as can be. So I trust him implicitly to walk like a gentleman and not jump on anybody. Now, on the other hand, the puppy is a little bit more difficult. And so if you have a dog, it's best to keep that dog on leash. On leash, because if you don't, then you are possibly in for a liability. Yeah. The liability, not only if the dog, uh, or you can look at it from different, if you're hiking somewhere of, of rattlesnakes mm -hmm. being bitten or there are animals right now, and especially mm -hmm. when the dogs go out, I mean, there's there's squirrels that carry fleas. And, and coyotes. Coyotes. That entice the dog to right. chase them into their den. And then, I've, and, had, right. I've had that. But ideally, happened. the law is, yeah. in most cities, is very clear, is that a, a leash dog is considered only leashed with a five or a six-foot leash. So if you got the big extendos... Mm, that's not it. That is actually a technicality. So, okay. And I doubt very okay. much if animal control is really going to come out there and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and bring out the SWAT team for that. Okay. okay. But again, the farther the dog away is away from you, generally speaking, the less control you would have for the dog, unless you've really worked well with the dog, okay. to either okay. make the dog stop and freeze if there's something that should not. But the other side to remember is that not only is it just against the law, but sometimes it's not very good doggy etiquette. Okay, etiquette. Uh, yes, yeah, etiquette. <laughs> um, or where where ideally you shouldn't be petting somebody else's dog unless you have permission. Yes. You shouldn't allow your dog to play with another dog unless it, there's been a a. Um, uh, an okay by by the the yeah, handler, the yes, parent, okay. if you will, the the okay. doggy handler. Mm -hmm. um, again, because you don't know the other dog, and any it, it's actually like like your child. I mean, you wouldn't go up and hug a child that you don't know, exactly, or allow your dog to, or your child to play with somebody that they don't know about with, and that also can be very very dangerous. Okay, and and again, usually the, what I'm seeing in, in 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 my training is that usually with dog fights, because most people don't know how to stop a dog fight. Um, in dog fights, usually the damage to a dog to go to a veterinarian is usually about twelve to thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah, and okay. and by the way, I have pet insurance for my dogs, my animals. I recommend it highly because things happen and vet bills can go very yeah. very high. We only have about six minutes okay. left, so I just want to also extend an invitation for another area that is a specialty of yours, which is. Um, Go ahead and talk I, a little bit about that because I do want you back on the show. And yes, so I'm currently assigned to um, the juvenile division, and I work the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, which basically deals with child pornography and the, the sexual exploitation of children uh, uh, via the internet and such. And, and and such, I work with the national, or actually, we work with the National Center of the Missing and Exploited Children, mm -hmm. who on a daily basis gives us um, cyber. We call them cyber tips. The based on on uh, information received by the major uh, internet service providers. Fascinating. I I would like to, with your permission, yes. invite you back. And uh, Detective Gill has invited me to go for a ride along. A little threatened by it, but yeah. by, by it. But I think I'll go. Uh, I think I'll take you up on that. You said yes. I need a helmet. 
Do yeah. I get a Do I get a vest? You if get I'm a vest sh- and a helmet. Okay. Yes. I'm, can I take? No, I was going to say, can I take my dog? That <laughs> no. would be a disaster. No. But it, I think I'll take you up on that. Yeah. In um, fact, we have um, 71 affiliates in the Los Angeles area that work with us, agencies, not only just the Los Angeles Police Department, but okay. um, so um, and these agencies, and we provide training, we're federally funded, mm-hmm. we provide training to the officers and detectives on, on technology, mm-hmm. as well as understanding uh, more of the psychological aspects of the predator. Okay. Um, and then even most importantly is um, um, making sure that our kids are safe in, in, the, in the digital playground okay. that are out there. And we also do training for for, uh, uh, for community groups on how to keep your children safe and how to monitor your child. Okay, uh, so so much information. Yes. So, so if, please, please come sure, back. I, I, I just want to say a couple of more things. Um, I'm going to do another mind map group end of November, so please uh, contact me, subscribe to the radio show, and uh, you can always contact the Psychological Healing Center at drjudywtf.com will take you there, psychologicalhealingcenter.com will take you there. And of course, you know that I have a group of uh, therapists, life coaches. We do Skype therapy, teletherapy, in-person therapy, and um, we focus on a system of healing that will take you from wounds of childhood, decode them, and create a paradigm shift into health. With that said, um, I want to do what I do every episode, which is I'm going to shrink a tune. And this is a tune about um, a dog. Sheena Easton and Jesse Corti, I will always be with you. So I'm going to say this quickly. The song is by Sheena Easton. And it's uh, from the and uh, features Jesse Corti, and it's from the soundtrack All Dogs Go to Heaven. Sasha, I will always be with you, makes no difference where your road takes you to. Even if we're apart, now we're joined at the heart, though our moment may be gone, you and I will still live on. Charlie, I will always be with you, I'll be by your side, whatever you do. Other memories may fade, but the one that we made are eternal as a star. Now I'm part of who you are. And I'll be there with you in the sound of your laughter. I'll be in, I'll be in the tears you cry, because the way you and I have touched one another doesn't end with goodbye. I will always be with you like a guardian angel, constant and true. When you're lost in the night, lost in the night, and you can't see the light, my love will see you through. I will always be there. You'll have me there. I will always be with you. That's why I'm so passionate about dogs, because the human race is um, in trouble in the empathy department, and dogs have something special, unconditional love, which is the most powerful healing force on the planet. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate all this valuable information, and I hope to see you back very soon, and I'm going to join you on that ride. Please, thank you. Okay. Good night, everybody.